Hello, welcome back. Now it's time for us to have our book chat. Hmm, we have a piece with us titled Redefining Talent, Skill Sets Needed to Become Better in the Workplace. The author, Charles Ume, is a published author, business consultant, and inspirational speaker. It's great to have you on the show with us. Morning, TC. Good to be here. All right, so um, I have a feeling this book has been a long time coming. Uh, <laughs> sure. When did you put it together? Finally, last year, 2021. But it's been in the plans for how long? Okay, let's see. The pandemic here gave us more reason to bet it. So okay. 2020. Yeah. Okay, all right then. So you put together uh, a piece that talks about human skills. Yep. Um, so a lot of people have different types of skills in crafts, arts. Uh, they know how to use Excel. Is that the kind of skills you're talking about? <laughs> okay, when you talk about human skills, you were looking at those... Um, skills that you can do without in the workplace. Okay. So I know the first conversation is that um, in this era where we have most people working remotely, um, <clears throat> most organizations are looking more people with technical skills. But one thing about the pandemic here was that it told us more that we needed more people that could communicate more without the technical skills. Mm. We needed people that could relate more with people. Okay. So, so that was what bet there. So human skills here, we look at those um, social skills. We're yeah. talking about Okay, yes, yeah. There's quite a lot. There's quite a lot you've listed here. I'm yeah. definitely going to jump into it. Um, so what you're basically saying is that since there's more remote work yeah. uh, and, of, of course, opportunities to work overseas, yeah. there are certain skills that uh, employers, organizations are looking forward to. So if that person, that organization has those skills, they, they don't want to lose them. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so if you look at earlier on, um, there used to be... Um, the demand more for technical skills. Sure. But, but like I said, um, the pandemic here taught us that we needed more people that had the hats that mm -hmm. could connect more. And most, most organizations had to promote people that could connect more with their teams because um, at the end of the day, humans are not technology. Humans are humans first. So whoever has that ability to control, to manage, and to work with people effectively stands out. Yeah. And to work with people effectively, you've indicated here, Chapter 1, you need social capital. Yes. Uh, now, social capital, uh, it's, it's not, you know, a buzzword. It's not talking about social media here. You're talking about um, that um, exchange, that connection you have with people in your immediate work environment. Uh, but go further. So, 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 so what social capital? So, um, like we're discussing, there are different kinds of capital. In this era, um, you meet people because of, how good they are, what they do, they are intangibles. Now, um, so in this era, most of the times when you want to employ people, most of the times the first place for you to go to social media, yeah. you look at their digital footprints. Okay. And their digital footprints most times show you what they are all about. And we can't shy away from this, that's the reality. So we're seeing that um, prior to now, we might be asking, who's your dad, who's okay. your mom? What's the name of the family you come from? But in this era, we're looking at what impact can you bring to the table? What are those intangibles that make you stand out? And we're saying if you want to um, exist in the workplace, you must be able to have those social skills that stand you out. So social capital is one. You might not have the physical cash, but your capital could get you into rooms that um, money wouldn't take you into. I, why do I feel like you're talking to me? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like my phone has phone numbers of people that... <laughs> I probably might need one day, and I've never really had to use them, but uh, probably in an organization, I might not be the highest paid, but maybe they need somebody's phone number. You know who you're calling now. You know it's me. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. So, yeah. But I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, going further, um, people that lack yeah. social capital in the workplace, what are the detriments of that? So um, if you lack social capital, the funny thing is that you're like... Um, you're losing money, you're leaving money on the table. Wow. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we, we really run with people that are top of the mind. So yeah. we're saying, um, what, what, even, what gives you capital? We're saying the world has skimmed you out by not having physical capital. Okay. <laughs> so you have a chance to show um, how good you are. Mm -hmm. So um, your, your, your skills in the workplace, what makes you stand out at work? What's that thing that makes it impossible for everyone on your team to do without, not to do without you? So we're saying, be able to leverage on those strengths okay. and showcase more. The idea is showcase. Social capital is about showcasing your own strengths. That um, we've. I'm so sorry to, to cut you there because okay. I, I wanted to talk. This word capital keeps popping up at my at, at me. Yeah. Uh, but when you think of capital uh, and it's not actual tangible money, 
Yeah. Um, you need to know how to negotiate with it. Perfect. So if you have actual money, it's very easy to throw money at people. True. Uh, you get things done when you have the money. But if you have only social capital, where how do you begin to negotiate in the office? So that's the skill. So um, your ability to convert it stands you out. Like we're, we're given scenarios, so for instance, um, um, I want to buy, um, you want to buy a car for your organization. But at the end of the day, you understand that the organization you want to buy a car from, have the, they need something from you. So, okay, let's look at advert rate. Um, they need to do advert. We come up with the cost of advert for one month, okay. and that's equivalent to some cars for my team. Okay. At the end of the day, we exchange without physical cash, okay. and we have something on the table. Mm -hmm. So, your ability to think that's true and come up with that stands you out first. Mm. And not everybody can think that process true. Okay. So, um, that's one example. Example. And they are, it, it cuts across every field. So there's something you have that someone else doesn't have. So we're saying bring it to the table, convert this, and make sure that you use it to your own uh, advantage. Yep. And this works in, in every organization? Yes, it does. So the idea is you would have to think it's true. Most people don't really know what they have. So we're like, um, list out all the things you have and find someone that is not even in your own bubble. Because I always assume that when we're in our bubble, we don't see how strong, we don't see our strength. It's always good to bring out someone that is not in the bubble, that sees you well, and is able to place your own cards on the table and help you see them clearly. So it okay. works everywhere. Okay, so now uh, in an organization, uh, part of the talents that organizations are looking for are people that have social capital, people that have negotiation skills. Yeah. Uh, but where does the place of just being nice to people now stand? Uh, because in the end, you have some very powerful players. You have some very strong personalities in the workplace. Yeah. Uh, and you don't really like them, you know. Um, so where does that come into play? So... Um... When you say you don't like people, I always, I always tell people in the workplace, it's not your business to like or not like. Wow. Um, the idea is that work has to get done. But mm. people, and we always remember people, um, there is, there's a gatekeeper that his work is to open the gate. And whether you like him or not, your job is to make him feel good. Mm. And um, it, it cuts across every industry. Everyone will always remember how you make them feel. Okay. So at the end of the day, you need to be kind to people. You need to be kind. You need to show courtesy. You need to have camaraderie. Mm. Your ability to do those things in the workplace um, keeps, you, keeps you on that social um, list. Yeah. yeah. So and increases your bank account. Your Honestly. social bank, capital bank account. <laughs> social capital bank account. <laughs> so you might not be the highest paid yet, yeah. but hey, you might be the person that your organization does not want to lose. True. Why? Because you're kind, because you have social capital, and because you know how to use it. Use it. Use it. Use it is the key thing. You might have it, but don't know how to use it. So we're saying use it. And um, back to the pandemic here. Mm. The pandemic here taught us that people, um, people that had more emotional intelligence, that were, that were people people, yeah. were, um, that, th that skill was more important than people that had technical skills. So we're wow. saying wow. use it well in this era, and you win. I have to say a big thank you to you, Charles Ume, here with an amazing book, Redefining Talent, Skill Sets Needed to Become Better in the Workplace. Great piece.